welcome to Apologia and another edition of Ham and Egg News. Hey, what do you say we have some ham and eggs? Where we react to Ken Ham reacting to things. If you're new to the channel, take a second to tap on the subscribe button so that you'll be notified when new science, theology, and news videos come along. Uh, this first one found the last stand of a human ancestor. So this is talking about a find from way back in 1931 on the Indonesian island of Java along the Solo River where they found uh, sort of this piece of a skull poking up through the ground. God, I hate it when people say piece of the skull poking out of the ground and they have no fucking idea what they're talking about. Man. But isn't it funny? It's like you're a legitimate paleontologist. You're, you actually do real research. Like, why, why, why do you have to dress like everybody knows your credentials? And I'm like, okay, well, I have a neon orange beard, and I'm wearing a lab coat, and I'm covered in tattoos. Do you think I'm a paleontologist? And they're like, no, you're like a biker. And it's, it's like, oh. nope, uh-huh. Here's, here's the stuff. Welcome to my lab. This is my deal going on. Hi, Paul. How you doing? I'm doing okay. <laughs> How are you? Uh, not so bad. Um, yeah, I think it's time that I waded into this whole thing because one, I mean, answers in Genesis, holy crap. I'm still waiting for them to block me on Twitter like their colleagues at ICR did, chicken shits. So yeah, they're talking about the Homo erectus material that was found, right? Exactly. Yeah, what they fail to mention is that you've got Homo erectus on this small area, but I think it's only around like 13 or 14 different specimens. So when we use specimen in paleontology, and let me make a caveat, I have read the material on this, but I'm not a paleoanthropologist. So anthropologists deal in human remains and human people and all that. I'm just a paleontologist, and we don't dig people. <laughs> I'm, However, not so, I'm not so hot on people either. Yeah, right. So when we use a term like specimen, that doesn't mean like an individual animal with all of its bits all together. A specimen is a singular fossil that has been found. We use the term individual when we're talking about multiple fossils found that can be correlated to the same animal, person, etc. So they found over, I think it was like 25,000 specimens at this site. And like 13 or 14 out of 25,000 were Homo erectus. So it's not like this is some lost civilization washed away in a flood or any garbage like that. You're talking about possibly the last standouts of a dying species. Hell, depending on the taphonomy, so taphonomy is how an individual disarticulates after death, because water could affect it, ground shaking, trees growing, scattered by animals, uh, predating on the corpse, things like that. So depending on the taphonomy, I mean, it is possible that all 14 of those specimens may be one individual. I haven't seen the fossils myself. That's just speculation. But it could be the last individual. It could be a last group of individuals. I'm half expecting them to describe this as some kind of a Gilligan's Island situation or something. They were oh, all ab absolutely. It's like, oh, well, maybe they were washed away and they rafted. Yeah. Because Noah is an actual man. That's <laughs> almost sapient. Ugh. But isn't it funny, though, that you have aspects of creationism that goes, these were of the proto-humans and Noah was better. Well, isn't that evolution? That if these were proto-humans or earlier humans or anything like that, and then they led to Noah, that's evolution. It is. But the thing I really like is that they go, oh, no, but Neanderthals and Erectus and Floriensis, they are all human. They are all human sapien sapien. And it's just different, like how a child looks like to an adult or how X person looks to Y person. Then why are you using their Latin names? And why are you stating that they are last stand of a human ancestor? It's like, pick your fucking fight. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's see what they actually say. They may actually say that. Oh, fuck. They finally, in their view, dated this, and they believe it's 108,000 years old, which makes it the most recent uh, Homo erectus that they've discovered yet, according to the secular Right, of uh, course, dating. the dates. You know, there's a lot of problems with the dating systems. <laughs> There's a lot of problem with the dating systems. Uh, no, there's actually not because they all corroborate each other. I, uh, Paul, you know, you know, like there's more than radiocarbon dating, right? Oh, <laughs> well, not only that, but carbon dating would be completely ineffective at 108,000 years. Exactly. And a, what a lot of them do is like, oh, well, car they'll say that. They'll like, well, that's too old to be carbon dated, so it has to be wrong. It's like, well, you can <laughs> use uranium lead dating or lead lead dating or uh, is like potassium argon dating. There's not just one form of 
radiocarbon dating. There's many, 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 many different ones, and they all corroborate each other. And that stupid argument of, oh, well, they date the rocks. Well, you have to date the rocks because that's where things like lead and potassium and argon and everything are held in crystalline matrices. See, when a fossil is fossilized, the minerals surrounding the organic material go into that bone and replace the organic material. You're finding a rock in the shape of that bone. So you're dating the exact same material that that fossil is made from. So when they use that argument, well, they have to date the rocks and they use the fossils, they date the fossils by the rocks. It's because the fossils are rocks, you fucking muppet. There is an entire multi-page article, AAS3.org, I believe, radiometric dating from a Christian's perspective, and it completely ruins every single creationist trope about radiometric dating. And it goes through every single one, including the rock state fossils, fossil state rocks, mm. and all that, and breaks down the main eight radiometric dates that are used for paleontology, geology, and all that. But there's more than that. We've got geochronology, we've got dendrochronology, chronology, the dating of the magnetism in rocks mm -hmm. and the tree rings in, in, uh, in trees. You've got glacier aging studies. They focus on this one thing. It's like, oh, well, radiocarbon dating is questionable. No, the only people questioning it are you. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah, let's, let's keep going. And, and hopefully I won't turn this into a three-hour special where I'm a raving lunatic at the end well, of then, it. Well, then that'll be a three-hour tour. We'll be our Gilgans Island. Oh, God, you went there. The Homo erectus, they're humans. Uh, it's just one of the names that people give to it. They're, they're humans, clearly human. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, these are post-flood people. Whoa, 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 whoa. He did go there. He did go there. He did go there. But he went the opposite route that some of them go. Some of them go, these were pre-flood people that died in the flood. Okay, if they were post-flood people, how did they die in the global flood if they were descendants of Noah? Or is he saying they died in something after the flood? He could be. But I thought all fossils were deposited via the global flood. So they either had to die in the flood or evolution is backwards <laughs> right although Bodhi here in the black shirt his big deal is the tower of babel that's his particular expertise so he likes to hypothesize that uh, all differences in humans came about because they were building a tower that didn't work out so he might oh, this, be having that bias right 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 the second time everybody fucked up <laughs> right the new paper dates the fossil to about 108,000 years old, very recent for, for a species thought to have evolved around 2 million years ago. So Bodhi and I, we actually yeah, wrote, we the, wrote same the same thing. Note down. Yeah, sure. So it was from 2 million years old. What's your point? Mammoths have been around for fuck all of a long time. You've got felids, you have lizards and squamates and, well, fish. The argument of, oh, it's been around for that long and it never evolved, well, why not? You've had versions of the coelacanth for millions and millions of years. If there's no environmental pressure, and if the population is stable enough, and there's no grand, you know, colossal, almost cosmic fuck up, it maintains a stasis. We have shit going into space, and there are still people in her home country that are uncontacted tribes that don't know what plastic is. Homo sapiens sapiens showed up about 200,000 years ago. We're not very different from Homo sapiens sapien of 200,000 years or Homo sapien of before that. Minimal differences. That's not a big fucking deal. But it tweaks them so hard. Mm -hmm. I mean, and I get it. I get you're stuck in a worldview. I'm a Maple Leafs fan. We get into the playoffs, and I'm like, plan the parade. I'll be at Nathan <laughs> Phillips Square. But it happens, albeit rarely. <laughs> we get past the first round. But that's hockey talk. That's a different part of the program. Why is it so hard to conceive that a stable population of individuals found another population of individuals, and they coexisted for a short amount of time? They could have been a small remaining group of people with their own culture, in their own life, ending out their days with other people that look kind of familiar. Well, correct me if I'm wrong, but on an island, they would also be spared some environmental pressures that mainland people might be facing, right? Absolutely. A good case in point, to use a, uh, a paleontological analog, is the woolly mammoth. 
possibly due to hunting from humans, possibly due to being outcompeted by uh, bison, and definitely due to gradual climate change, not human-assisted climate change, which also exists, all you assholes. That's a different show, Trevor. Uh, The good rule of thumb is like between 9,000 and 11,500 years ago, most of the Ice Age megafauna was going extinct. Well, that was until a group of enterprising young woolly mammoths ended up on what is now Wrangell Island up in the Bering Sea. Wrangell Island, all those mammoth remains date to around 4000 BC. So while the Great Pyramids of Giza were being built, woolly mammoths were hanging out on Wrangell Island Mm. because everything stabilizes. Island life is actually pretty damn good. It's super easy to avoid any kind of environmental pressures on an island unless like they're tidal waves, hurricanes, things like that, and it wipes Mm. out your entire population. Island populations through island dwarfism tend to get smaller. These mammoths were hanging out and having a good time on an island, and they got smaller because on an island, smaller things take less resources. And no change. Nothing. No change, yeah. yeah, nothing changed. Bert got to evolve yeah. for a little yeah. while. Yeah. I called it. I called it. All right, keep going. I'll You're just a be... prophet. <laughs> oh, I'll try and be quiet. The name Java has been around for a while uh, for that particular area. And what's interesting is that's actually a variant name of one of Noah's grandsons, Javen. Holy shit. No. Oh, <laughs> God. Son of a bitch. <laughs> Dumb motherfucker. <laughs> why? 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 I mean, why? Does he think that the name Java was what they were using 4,000 years ago? Oh, yeah, because totally, like, you know, Indonesians named it after oh my god he's the tower of babel expert he should know that anyone who left that area had a different language according to the bible myths yeah. so why would they be using the names the proper names they wouldn't i always thought that it was named after a plant because i thought java was from java in sanskrit that's like barley what the romans called it was barley island uh, oh interesting so, yeah i'm also a beer expert so it was like the, the, the history of barley <laughs> is fucking awesome once barley is discovered worldwide and they're not using like sorghum and all that it's like hey this ferments a lot faster and a lot higher alcohol content let's party mm-hmm. uh, remember Ooh. Noah's sons are master shipbuilders so as they spread out around the world there were people on boats taking people Absolutely. and animals to various parts of the world after so. rabble yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. i'm sorry but if you were on a fucking boat for 40 days and 40 nights, do you ever think you'd want to make another goddamn boat again? Well, well, money that you spent the 120 years prior to that. Building it, yeah. <laughs> you had to hear your shitty dad go, hand me one more spot. I think you'd be done with boats. I think you're right. And anyway, weren't they embarrassed by his dad because he got drunk and like showed him his junk? Indeed. So possibly yeah, they did want to immediately build a boat and get away from dad. You don't know. <laughs> yeah, it, oh, yeah, maybe. Yeah, he's like, fuck you. I'm going to build a smaller raft. I don't need any animals with me. You random chick that I'm related to you. Come with me. <laughs> this is just throw shit to the wall and see what sticks. And I use hydrophobic paint, so nothing sticking, bud. I can't imagine being the paleontologist who had to sit there and sift through 25,000 fossils. <laughs> I've had 14. The Pontoma <laughs> erectus. Yeah. Is it always a glamorous job being a paleontologist? Oh yeah, it's all Indiana <laughs> Jones and you know. Yeah. Uh, and- no, no, no. What one? Archaeo and paleo ain't the same. There, Indiana Jones is a grave robber. We all don't wear those hats. Very few of us know how to use a bullwhip. Some of us do know how to use firearms. We are excellent drivers, however, and we don't fight Nazis. So no, it's not all Indiana Jones. But so what? When you find a fossil assemblage of multiple things, for example, the La Brea tar pits, you find shit different all the time. That, that's, that's a weird argument. Her, as a quote-unquote paleontologist, should know that, especially in South America, The amount of animal assemblages found in Brazil, in Ecuador, in all of that, like you find three different species of sloth within like 10 feet of each other in a sinkhole. That's that's not weird. And for them to make it, oh, it's it's spooky. I don't don't get these folks. Well, one of the strange things they feel they have to do is basically undermine science and make it sound like it's not common sense. Yeah, absolutely. They need to undermine science anything and everything, because that's the way their worldview works. There is a difference in science and in dogma, is that science, yeah, I will cuss at you, I will yell at you, I will call you an idiot, but if you present enough evidence to me, I will be forced to change my tone and adapt my paradigm 
to this new information. That is science. The greatest example of this was the Nyham debate when it was asked, what would change your mind? And Ken Ham goes on this rambling bullshit story and ultimately says nothing because the word of God is placed in the Bible is infallible. And then Bill Nye says, we would just need one piece of evidence. And that's the thing. If they were legitimately interested in gaining and spreading information, they would be willing to accept information that challenges their paradigm. As scientists, we relish this conflict. Awesome. All right, the next one comes from the New York Times. United Methodist Church announces plan to split over same-sex marriage. Let me jump ahead. We're not going to talk about whether the Baptist Church should split or not, because we don't care. Nope. It's like, hey, it's infighting. It's the same thing as like, you know, the in paleontology, we have that too. Like, oh, is it a tree to ground or ground to tree thing for dinosaurs and birds? Or is this animal actually that animal? Is like Nano Tyrannus a, a, a juvenile T-Rex or is it its own species? We have those kind of things too. Is T-Rex a scavenger? No. Yeah, it's, uh, it's kind of fun. So let's see what they want to talk about. All right. All right, the next one comes from Science News. Small cousins of T-Rex may actually have been growing teenagers. Are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. All right, okay. So, okay, obviously they're doing the new ty- Nano Tyrannus paper. All right. Okay, this is going to be fun. So Nano Tyrannus was a small theropod that was found that looked just different enough to be like a smaller, sleeker, kind of more, it's more like a Fiat 500A Barth compared to like the Fiat 500X. It's a smaller, more brutal, like faster version of a T-Rex. So it was named Nano Tyrannus, or, you know, small tyrant. I get that. There is a paper that just came out going, hey, it's totally a juvenile T-Rex. And to be honest, I was in the Nano Tyrannus camp for a long time. But as I was just saying, new evidence was presented and I read the paper. I went to the Natural History Museum of Los Angeles County, where they have an example of Nano Tyrannus next to a sub-adult T-Rex, next to a full-size T-Rex. And I'm looking at it. I'm looking at the skull architecture. I'm reading the paper. I'm like, yeah, you know what? I'm sliding kind of, kind of into the super baby juvie T-Rex because growth series are different for every animal. And you've got a great example. If any of your uh, folk out there are uh, bearded dragon owners, you have this cute little oval head when a beardy is born, particularly a male. It flares out in the, into this bitchin' triangle of just jaw strength goodness with additional, additional stuff for the beard to extend. And yeah, bones grow. That's what we do. And this isn't the first time this has happened in paleontology. We had it with Stigmalops and Dracorex Hogwartii, um, (laughs) the dragon of Hogwarts. Turns out that Dracorex is Stigmalock, and Stigmalock is Pachycephalosaurus. They started out bony and thorny, and then their skull grew as they became adults into this dome that they hit each other with. It's kind of rad. And sometimes we're wrong. Like when somebody says that, oh, Triceratops is a juvenile form of Taurosaurus. No, it's not. Because even though that the frill could possibly grow larger and can grow sinuses to uh, save weight, there's different ways to see whether an animal is a juvenile or an adult. Let's see if they go in deep about this and talk about specifically the leg bone, and the architecture of the skull. It's similar to T-Rex, but smaller, and the teeth are shaped a little Mm -hmm. bit different. So they thought, okay, this must be a new species. But the more they've looked at it, um, they just recently did a study where they looked at the microscopic structure of the leg, and they were like, oh, these are juveniles that are still rapidly growing based on the... um, Uh, what they were seeing in the bones. Yeah, they're juvenile because bone grows differently at different stages of your life. So when you're a baby or even a teenager, you can have what's called a green fracture if you break your arm. That's because your bone is still slightly pliable and it just kind of leaps off as opposed to a compound fracture in adults where shit breaks and pierces the skin and it's horrible. So bones aren't really rigid. I mean, they are, but they're bendy. Depending on the thickness, the rigidity, the growth series, the structures involved, you can tell whether or not an animal is a juvenile, subadult, or adult. Great way to look at it is the ends of the femur, of the human femur, 
when you're born are not attached. There's a layer of cartilage at the proximal and the distal ends, the top and bottom of your femur, that allows everything to grow. So the head of the femur will grow as more calcium is deposited. The whole length of it will grow and all that. When you get to your maximum growth point, the head of that femur will actually fuse. The cartilage ossifies and creates a joint that then fuses the ball of the femur, the head, to the shaft. If you're digging something up and you find the head of a femur that's not attached, guess what? That's not an adult animal. It's super fucking easy because until you have to have your entire adult weight, that is not going to be fused together. It's called an epiphysis. You have them on your spines. You have them on the ends of any growth limb. You have them on the tips of your fingers. You have all that. Unless it is at an adult stage, there is a high probability of finding it disconnected. So we finally got enough nanotyrannous material to look at it, to look at it closely, to compare it to other growth stages of T-Rexes that we have found, and they have added more evidence to the, hey, nanotyrannus is not a separate species. Nanotyrannus is a juvenile T-Rex. And that happens all the time also in reverse. We have the American Mastodon, for example. My friends down at the Western Science Center have found that California has its own Mastodon species, Mammuthus pacificus. At least I'm pretty sure that's the uh, Latin name they went with, the Pacific Mammoth. We were wrong. Instead of one species, there's actually two. So it goes both ways. And if we're wrong later, because we're always testing, we fix it. What is the problem in that? Why do they have an issue? What else are they saying about this crap? See, we got to think, when we're looking at the, the flood side, I mean, we need to think in terms of the biblical terminology here. There was a massive global flood, and what you're seeing is a snapshot, that one year. Yes, yeah. Uh, you know, over the, you know, so things that are living in various parts of the world, all over the place, they all get buried, boom, just like this. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, we're going to see some T-Rexes here, some here. You're going to see some variation in it, mm -hmm. see some young ones, see some juveniles. So we expect to see this sort of thing. Well, yeah, when a population dies, you get a cross-section of a population. But if things were all buried in a flood, there's a lot more I would expect to see, like hydrologic sorting. I would expect to see Cambrian rabbits. I want to see a mammoth bone that has tyrannosaur teeth marks on it. Why aren't dinosaurs found in the tar pits? That's such a bizarre leap of like, yeah, we expect to find that because of flood. Well, what about this because of the flood? Oh, that doesn't apply. But this site does. Oh, that one site does. Cool. I'm sorry, but Ken, answers in Genesis. I would have expected better. You need to reset your expectations, my friend. I, I guess. When your main tool is a life-size arc, every problem is going to look like a flood. Oh, wow. Very good point. In, back in Brazil, when I lived there, they had one fossil. Part of the fossil was described by one group and the other one for the other group. And there's two different species. Mm -hmm. they, they describe and classify as two different species, but actually part of the same. Well, yeah. Because if a skull isn't connected to a cervical vertebra and they're separated by a handful of meters and you've never seen the cervical vertebra of that animal before, it could be a new species. But it's an undescribed species. It's like, oh, a mammal, a new mammal was found or a new, a new theropod was found because we found part of its foot. We know what a theropod foot looks like or we know what a sauropod thoracic vertebra looks like. Yeah, that happens all the time. You can't say, oh, well, that one's near it, so maybe that belongs to this one. No, unless it's stuck together, unless it is in a death pose, and a majority of it is found, like Sue, the T-Rex, or the Stegosaur from the Rom, or a Zool, or anything like that, or Leonardo, the mummified Hadrosaur, or anything like that, or Stan, another T-Rex, or Thomas, another T-Rex. Black Beauty is my favorite. Yeah, Black Beauty, absolutely. We know those are individuals, but here's the thing. If you walk six feet and you find, say, another velociraptor femur, you could say, maybe it's the same animal. The one I have happens to be missing a femur, but if I'm an ethical paleontologist, I will not say, obviously, that belongs here. I'm going to say that's a little bit too far. We may have two individuals. That happens all the fucking time. And then it's completely disingenuous of her to use that as an argument against science. Normally when we see uh, fossils and uh, dinosaurs that we go to museums and etc., we think that we, we 
the paleontologists, they found everything right, complete. Right, yeah, they dug it up right, just like that. That's not actually correct. Multiple institutions around the world use what we call a composite. Because like, there's only been like 27 or 30 T. Rex skeleton, uh, partial T. Rex skeletons found, and then they nearly complete like Sue. And those composites are generally labeled. The ROM, Terrell, AMNH, uh, Natural History in New York, Smithsonian, LACM, Natural History LA, all that. They point out which ones are possibly from a different animal, which are possibly casts from another specimen from another museum. Because people like looking at dinosaurs, and it's nice to have a built animal. And no, you don't think, oh my God, they found it just like that. No, 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 no. Like, for example, go to the Field Museum. Go to Sue. Sue is the big-ass T-Rex. They are awesome. Sue is an amazing animal. And you will see it. And there's this brand new huge thing where it actually illustrates which part of the mount is either a recreation or a replica of an existing fossil. And then you look to your left and Sue's head is in the damn glass. It's not on the mount because it's very heavy. Like a a triceratops skull is upwards of a ton. You can't just mount that on a Hmm. simple steel armature and hope it survives. And they're always clearly labeled. Always, always clearly labeled. Unless it's a very, very old mount. And then that means the museum just hasn't gotten around to fixing the label copy. Um, Or... They're trying to be disingenuous, say, like at the Ark Museum. <laughs> Why don't we find them buried together? But, you know, if you know anything about teenagers, they want to stay up late. They right. want to run around. Yeah. And go, what the fuck? <laughs> what? Answers to Genesis loves their dad jokes. Well, kind of. hey, they anthropomorphize everything. Everything has to have human behavior. Hey, engineer, stay out of my dinos. Speaking of fossils, this one comes from the Institute for Creation Research. Oh boy, Institute of Creation Research, which by the way, blocked me on Twitter because they're chicken shits. Let's keep this going. This will be fun. 85 reports of biological remnants in fossils about a review paper uh, that was published in a secular science journal talking about all these different soft tissue finds. Oh no, soft tissues. They're going soft tissues. I hate it when they go soft tissues. To be fair, I actually went and tried to find not the ICR article, but the actual paper that was published on this from the University of Liverpool. And they call it, and I've never heard this term before, original biochemicals. Yes. The word soft tissue appears nowhere in this Correct. paper. Is that the preferred term? I would love to start using that if that's the preferred phrase. Original biochemicals, original biochemical signatures, or original biochemical structures. Soft tissue is used because it's anything that's not bone, or it could be skin or blood vessels and shit like that. That's what quote unquote soft tissue means. The thing that creationists latch on to is that specific term soft tissue. What they fail to understand, and or they willfully misunderstand, is that this is not soft tissue in a bone. We do not crack open a dinosaur bone and shit oozes out. In the original paper by Mary Schweitzer, who, which, by the way, is creationist, but upon this discovery has separated her faith from her science, and I applaud her 100% on that, and she works very, she is well-respected in our community of science. When these T-Rex, quote-unquote, T-Rex soft tissue came out, there was a very, very specific word in that 2005 paper And that word is demineralized. A fragment of a mineralized fossil was soaked in a weak acid solution for weeks or months, days, weeks, or months, depending on the strength of the acid solution. And what was left were very tiny nanometer-sized chunks. That is where the soft tissue came from. You had to melt the fucking rock around it to get to it. The absolute 100% disingenuous bullshit that young earth creationists use to argue that all of paleontology is crap and everything is wrong and dating is wrong and all of this is because we find soft tissues in dinosaurs. Because one, they don't understand the science that they're reading. Two, they willfully ignore parts like demineralization. And three, 
they are locked into a worldview that is incapable of understanding what evidence actually is. Even Mary Schweitzer herself has admonished the young earth creationist culture on using her work without understanding it to try and debunk science. She actually did that on my show, so I will play a clip now. And I think that young earth creationists have to be really, really careful when they sit there and try to manipulate the data to support their worldview. That is not science. If these guys would take half the energy that they spend trying to prove that the world is young and use it to change the world around them, feed the hungry, take care of the kids, get the cats off the street, anything, that our world would be so much better, but they waste so much time and energy and effort on disproving that the world is old. It's not a salvation issue. Get over it. Oh, God, I hate these people. They didn't read that paper. Did ICR just read the abstract? Because that paper goes into great detail about all the different quote-unquote biological signatures that are found in fossilization. The number they want here is 85. Yeah, okay, makes sense. What they want to say is, this is so common, and if these foolish paleontologists hadn't been blinded by their billions of years assumptions, we would have found this so much earlier. Now that we're looking, now that their blinders are off, now we're finding it everywhere. That's the narrative. Uh, now that their blinders are off. Uh, uh, anyway, that's, that's what I predict the narrative will be here. I'm, I'm guessing that's yeah, what we're Yeah, absolutely. We were, they, they said in the article that finding the soft tissue is very, 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 very rare. Yeah. When we were like, no, we talk about it all the time on yeah. the show. We they it. always say that it's rare. Why? Certainly there is a little bit of hyperbole when people are describing their own studies to popular media. Well, of course. I mean, uh, everybody wants a good review. I mean, everybody wants to stand out from the rest of the crowd. But I'm going to treat that as an ad hom fallacy because that's insulting. They're going, it's like, oh, it has to be special. They want to be famous. No, that's not the only reason why scientists do that. We do it because that's fucking cool. And yeah, it is rare. So what can immediately debunk her whole argument is that they're all like, well, no, it shouldn't be rare. Bah, 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 bah. There's only been 85 cases. How much dead shit has been found and there's only 85 cases? I mean, come on. How much more rare can you be? It's not common. That's why we make a big deal out of it. Because it makes that fossil to be special. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah, I, no, I'm, I'm, no, I'm not okay. She's irritating the fuck out of me. But yeah, let, let, her, let her bleed on. Those soft tissue mm -hmm. would not be preserved um, with millions of years, mm -hmm. which they believe that it was. Um, it's a big they, problem within their worldview. Well, no, 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 no. No, it is not a big problem for us. It's fucking exciting. For the longest time, sure, we were wrong. Ooh, I will give her a point on that, that yes, for the longest time, no, no soft tissue could possibly exist. Millions of years, it's all mineralized. There's no organic material left, blah, 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 blah. Then all of a sudden, you find some, and you're like, holy fuck, we were wrong. Let's start looking for it. And then we find 85 cases. Ooh, 85, 85 cases. Some of these cases are literally like fingernails, claws, like his collagen counts. Right? Collagen so absolutely counts. And collagen uh, decay, collagen decay is a wild thing. Like collagen decay can actually be arrested. I mean, and we've known that for a long time. Right. So not all these cases are like iron left from blood cells. No. Some of these some are. Some of them are not. Some of them are, are like color bands and tails of dinosaurs quantitative x-rays and fluorescent material or you could use immunofluorescence to see if there were any antibodies that were fossilized that's occurred you've got photoelectron uh, spectroscopy where you can find shells and stuff like that because x-rays excite certain atoms and they cause them to emit electrons and fluoresce there's liquid chromatography protein masses when they mineralize change color so different pigments change color when they mineralize, and you end up with, holy shit, this dinosaur had a black and white banded tail. There's so many, many things. It's nuts. The quote-unquote soft tissue thing, they're trying to lump it all into one. Right. And because if they put everything under goo, you know, their crack open, fine goo bullshit, they can debunk it easier because they're disingenuous fucking grifters. Oh. I need more rum. 
in this uh, review paper describe fossil, uh, the soft tissue like blood vessels, dried but intact skin, mm -hmm. connective tissues, mm -hmm. red blood cells, bone cells, biochemicals that are very specific to animals so they know it's not some kind of bacterial biofilm contamination or something. Right, right. Uh, proteins, collagens, elastin, um, keratin, all kinds of different things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, they're, that's exactly what they're doing. They are lumping everything into the soft tissue argument into their crack open fine goo bullshit. And that is so disingenuous and so, ah, uh, that is, that's, that is repugnant behavior, man. And that thing is I get so wired on this topic and I've been wired on this topic for a handful of years now that I don't even use caffeine anymore. <laughs> it's like you, you want a natural high become a scientist. They have no rights and no authority to be all high and mighty of, we've been talking about this for a long time. No, you haven't. You only talk about it after we fucking find it. So that's why people were shocked when they first found some of the uh, soft tissue, some of the red mm -hmm. blood cell things mm -hmm. that uh, I know Dr. Mary Schweitzer had been working on. That shocked everybody. Now that they're seeing this all over the place, I mean, it should just really take the wind out of the sails of this right. evolutionary worldview. Mm -hmm. What the fuck? No. No, it, does, it doesn't take the wind out of the sails. And how dare you use her name? I will go to fucking bat for Mary any which way. Oh, yeah. Because at first when they start um, finding those things, mm -hmm. they're like, oh, no, it's contamination. But right, now yeah. they have so many mm -hmm. that it's like, uh, it can't all be contamination. Yeah, contamination, you know. So. Oh, 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 yes. Yes, of course we thought it was biofilm contamination and all that because we didn't understand the way or the ability for these soft tissues through iron preservation or anything like that to actually work. Yes, there was a huge fucking fight. It went back and forth for years, almost a decade. That is not, oh, we were wrong and we're playing, you know, and oopsie. No, that is science. That is Mary going, hey, I found something. That is a couple of people going, hey, can we look at what you found? Hey, it may be this. And that's Mary testing again. That's Mary going, okay, you may be right. Well, let me test it again with something else. No, I found this. And that's, you know, and then they go back and forth. That is the scientific method in its entirety and beauty. Science is not dogmatic bullshit that is completely ruled by an anecdotal tome of outdated fucking stories. Woof. And if you actually look at the uniformitarian dating methods, 90% of them give dates less than billions of years old. Wow. Yeah, he hasn't looked at some of the really, really crazy shit that like gives age of the universe level age. Wow. Paul, for your viewers, I will <laughs> send you that link to that radiometric dating from a Christian perspective paper. It'll blow your mind. It's great. More people need to know that this paper exists. I can't wait. Oh, it's a great paper. You can yeah. have like a hundred billion years of, of, of time, but right. if you don't have the process there, you know, you're not getting anywhere. You're not going to yeah. get anywhere. Well, guess what? We have both the process and the time. So, all right. So <laughs> moving in a slightly different uh, direction from the telegraph. All right. Well, it looks like that's the end of the interesting story. Well, I think you're going to need to go and treat yourself to something very kind. Yeah. It's, it's tiki bar time at some point in the world. Wow, 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 wow. Okay. I mean, if that's what they're sticking with, fuck, man. What what the hell? Like just <laughs> I do this every I'm week. I'm so sorry. And so like I have so many people, like a lot of your listeners may know me, a lot of them not. Yeah, hi, by the way. I did I have I just kind of jumped in your stream and didn't do an introduction, did I? No, who well, are I'm you? I'm Trevor Valley. I'm the former lab supervisor of the La Brea Tar Pits. I'm a career paleontologist, and I specialize in fossil recovery. So in all sorts of things. I'm not a paper writer. I'm what's called a dirty academic. So all the stuff that those guys in that paper were writing about, guys like me go out and find. Going out in the field is a huge part of paleontology, and I specialize in the discovery and, and recovery of fossils in both urban construction and non-urban environments. I am a career paleontologist and have been for the last, God, 14 years now. I have dug all over the United States, even other areas such as Siberia, digging up woolly mammoths for my National Geographic documentary, Mammoths Unearthed. And you can always find me on Twitter, usually ranting and raving at these jackasses, at Tattoos and Bones. 
Uh, so yeah, that's me. So I just, I didn't realize that maybe nobody even knows who the hell I am because all of a sudden they're talking about, well, we found a skull sticking out of the ground and I just had to burst my way in here because God damn it, someone's wrong on the internet. Well, thank you so much for stopping by and we usually get the sense they're wrong. It's nice to know precisely why today. Well, I appreciate that, Paul. Thank you very much. Give my love to Shannon. I hope your Oilers do well. I hope Shannon Senators just die in a fire. <laughs> cool. Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go swallow a bathtub of rum. And uh, yeah, hope to catch you later, bud. See you.